Over the past few months, I've made videos covering almost every new Super Mario Bros. game. In these videos, I've tried my best to understand how they changed the genre their predecessors so strongly defined, if these games are good, if they're bad, and overall just returning to a series I grew up alongside. So with that in mind, welcome to my final video in my series covering all the new Super Mario Bros. games. In this video, we're going to be looking at the one and only New Super Luigi U. We're going to be seeing how it fares against all the other entries in the series, if it stood the test of time, and most importantly, answering one simple question. Is New Super Luigi U actually good? Initially released as DLC for New Super Mario Bros. U on June 20th, 2013, and then later re-released as a port in New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe on January 11th, 2019, New Super Luigi U is technically the fifth entry in the New Super Mario Bros. series. I say technically because the game was initially released as DLC, but did eventually get a standalone physical release on the Wii U. This game was created as part of Nintendo's Year of Luigi celebration, the year that not only marked the 30th anniversary of Luigi's original debut in the Mario Bros. arcade game, but also Nintendo's worst fiscal year in the history of the company, with a reported loss of $456 million. Despite Nintendo's loss of almost half a billion dollars though, they were able to create one of the most unique 2D Mario games ever. A 2D Mario game without Mario. Mario's absence is immediately presented to the player in this game's opening cutscene, where we see the exact same opening as Mario U, except Mario isn't there, with only his hat representing where he once sat. In light of Mario's absence though, we see the introduction of a brand new playable character, Nabbit. Nabbit was first introduced in Mario U as a thief who constantly stole from Toad Houses. You had to chase him through a variety of different levels and were rewarded with items if you caught him. Nabbit had such a cool design for just being a background character, so it's cool he got a full spotlight in this game. He's presented as kind of an easy mode character though, being able to run right through enemies without getting hit. Now while I think having an easy mode character is great for encouraging younger players to pick up the game and have a chance at competing with those more skilled, it's unfortunate that someone is literally required to pick him if you're playing with four people, as most people would prefer to experience the game normally. But with Luigi U's completely overhauled and more challenging level design, Nabbit doesn't have too big of an advantage over others. Yes, despite Luigi U having the exact same world map and opening as Mario U, every single level here is completely new. Instead of Eggcorn Plains Way as the first level, we now have Waddle Wing Warning. Instead of Tilted Tunnel, we have Crooked Cavern. Instead of Crushing Cogs Tower, we have Flame Gear Tower. Along with this, levels are now much more difficult, and most importantly, much shorter. At the beginning of every level, your timer is at 100 seconds left instead of the usual 300 to 400. Now at first, this sounds awful. I mean, some stages in Mario U were already short as is. Now they're gonna make them even shorter? But in reality, this is one of the best decisions they could have made. This game features some of the absolute best stages in 2D Mario history. And before I go into detail of some of the best in the game, I first want to talk about the controls. In every single new Super Mario Bros. game he's appeared in, which is uh, all of them, Luigi has controlled the exact same as Mario. But it wasn't always like this. In Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels, the Japan-exclusive sequel to Super Mario Bros. on the NES, Luigi is a fully playable character featuring a completely different playstyle than that of Mario's. In the game, Luigi has a much more higher jump than Mario, allowing for him to more easily complete difficult platforming challenges. But in order to not make Mario unviable, he is also incredibly slippery, controlling on the ground like he's on ice all the time, making it difficult to bring the character to a stop. After this game though, this control scheme was practically forgotten about only returning a few times over the years. But in New Super Luigi U, it was back. And not just for Luigi. Every single playable character in the game gets the new control scheme, making the game not only a little more difficult, but also extremely refreshing and unique. The high jump allows for you to reach new heights never thought possible in New Super Mario Bros, and the reduced traction forces you to think completely differently about how you're going to tackle different situations. Both the level design and new control scheme go hand in hand to create some of the most fun I've ever had with 2D Mario. I mean, just look at this. Totally meant to do that. The levels in this game are incredible. And just to show you how much the level design has improved, I want to look back at some of my favorites from Mario U and what they've done with them in Luigi U. Starting off with Frosted Glacier Dash 1. In Mario U, this stage was called Star Spinning Sky and revolved around platforming across a bunch of different stars. I enjoyed the level because the stars were a set piece we had never seen before and the aesthetic of the level was amazing. 
In Luigi U, the level is now called Bruisers and Barrels, and it's so much better. This level makes use of the bruiser enemies, that throughout the stage are punching barrels at you while you try to ascend to the top. What makes this level so great is its creativity. The bruiser enemies are almost always seen in ghost houses, so seeing them here is awesome. The level being vertical also adds to its creativity. Most vertical levels in this game are auto-scrollers, but this one is not. The goal is just basically get to the top as fast as you can with each new floor featuring a new angry bruiser to avoid. The most important thing to note about this level though, and really most levels in this game, is that a stage like this only works in Luigi U. If this were a full length Mario U stage, it would get boring really quick. But the great thing about Luigi U is that these concepts never get overused. The level is over before it gets repetitive, which in turn makes it more memorable. In Mario U, I really enjoyed Sparkling Water stage Haunted Shipwreck. The level took place in an abandoned ship now haunted by ghosts and featured three main sections of which I enjoyed all of them. In Luigi U, this level is now called Haunted Cargo Hold and somehow is able to basically combine the three major sections into one compact section. The three main sections in Mario U stage were a pole jumping section where you platform it across floating boxes, an underwater section where you avoided groups of boos, and a maze at the end filled with secrets. In Luigi U, you have the pole jumping across boxes, now with the groups of boos being there, an alternate path below, which is an underwater section, now filled with spiny cheeps that chase you around, and a hidden secret pipe at the end that leads to a secret exit that partially represents the maze section at the end. Now, most levels in this game do have completely new concepts separate from their Mario U counterparts, but I just wanted to mention this stage to show that even if this game reuses concepts from Mario U, it does so in a genius way, almost remixing them in a sense to make them feel more fresh. The last level I want to talk about in this comparison section is easily the best overhauled stage in the entire game, Beanstalk Jungle. In Mario U, this stage was called Skyward Stalk and was one of my favorites in the entire game, not just because of its level design, but how it correlated to where it was leading the player as a secret exit. On the map, the secret exit takes you up a beanstalk high up in the clouds, which was very well reflected in the level. However, in Luigi U, they do it even better. Notice the world this path goes over, it's so to jungle. Luigi U realizes this, and instead of making it a sky-themed level, it's a jungle-themed level, filled with piranhas and waddle wings, that instead of being a vertical auto-scroller, is more of a horizontal auto-scroller, representing the fact that you're going over Soda Jungle, and ending with you reaching the clouds. I love it! But, not only was this game's level design amazing, their secrets were just as great, with every single level in the game featuring a hidden Luigi somewhere throughout it. There's no reward or anything for finding all of them, Rather, they're just little secrets that make these levels that much cooler. A lot of the time, the hidden Luigi's are just 8-bit sprites made out of colorful blocks that you just see and move on. But, some of these get a bit more interesting, and show just how much love and care went into this game. For example, in the airship level All Aboard, if you notice at the very beginning of the level, instead of a Bowser head on the ship, it's a Luigi head. Or in Painted Pipeworks, where the secret exit of this level features this canvas with a beautiful painting of Luigi, stylized just like the level on it. Or, my absolute personal favorite, the hanging sign at the end of Vanishing Ghost House, which features a depiction of Luigi fighting King Boo, which is a really cool reference to Luigi's Mansion. Little secrets like this don't change how you play levels, but make them much more memorable. I mean, I'm always going to remember Vanishing Ghost House because of how cool that easter egg is. These hidden Luigis weren't the only secrets the game held though. Similar to every new Super Mario Bros game before it, Luigi U has three star coins spread around in every single level. Now, star coins still function the exact same way as always, you collect them in order to unlock levels in Star Road, however, the way you approach collecting them is completely different. A lot of the time, the star coins aren't very well hidden, they're usually out in the open ready for you to grab. Now in every other new Super Mario Bros game, I would call this lazy, but in Luigi U, it actually works in the game's favor. You see, Luigi U has an incredibly strict time limit on levels, you always want to be moving. So stopping and trying to find a way to reach a certain star coin can seriously harm your run, and can be the difference between completing the level or dying to the clock. The timer is a bigger enemy than anything in this game. Along with that, since every level starts under 100 seconds, you are literally only hearing the sped up version of the music tracks that are supposed to play in these levels, which only furthers the amount of pressure on you at all times. New Super Luigi U can be extremely stressful at times. And on the topic of stress, going back to this game, I was extremely surprised at how difficult a lot of the levels were. And not just because of the clock. Luigi U does not mess around when it comes to difficult level design, which is something I love about the game. 
A lot of the other new Super Mario Bros. games rarely offer a challenge, and when they do, it's in the post-game or in a side mode. However, New Super Luigi is different. Its difficulty is one of its main gimmicks, and it's handled extremely well. Hell, I even died on the first level. And while a lot of the levels in this game are hard and took me multiple attempts to beat, they're never unfair, which is extremely important. There's a big difference between difficult and unfair. A great example of unfair level design in Mario are Kaiza blocks. There is absolutely nothing a player can do about this obstacle unless they're aware of it beforehand, in which case they can constantly check for them, which is pretty boring. One of the best examples of difficult level design that is fair is Super Mario 3D World's Champion's Road. This level is regarded as one of the hardest Mario levels ever, but handles its difficulty extremely well. It took me like two hours to beat this level for the first time, but those two hours were some of the most fun I've had with the game. I was constantly learning about the level, I got it down to a rhythm almost, and finally beating it felt amazing. This is not to say Luigi's levels are nearly as difficult as Champion's Road, but instead that they handle difficulty in a very similar way. When you get stuck on a Luigi U level, sure you might be a little upset, but that's not because there's 22 Bowsers falling out of the sky and a Kaiza block over every gap. It's because you're taking longer on a level than you initially expected and you want to move on. Learning the ins and outs of a difficult level in this game and finally beating it feels amazing. If that new 2D Mario rumor I've been hearing more and more about really comes true, I would love to see this game share difficulty similar to Luigi U but I wonder how other people would feel about that. So please, if you care at all, leave a comment about your thoughts on difficulty in 2D Mario. I'm very curious. Moving on though, I wanted to touch on the overhauled Koopalings levels, because personally, I think these castle levels are so much better than before. In Mario U, I love the Koopalings fights because they were so different and unique from what we'd seen before. The castle levels themselves though, were alright at best. A lot of the time it was just simple platforming above lava, with only two castles having a unique setting. But in Luigi U, each of these castles feel completely distinct and unique. I mean you got stages like Lemmy's Lights Out Castle. This one isn't all too intense or anything, as it's the first one, but it features a completely unique concept we've never seen in a castle before. That is having to platform in almost complete darkness across moving pendulums, with enemies and secrets hiding in the shadows. Another great one is Morton's Lava Block Castle. This stage has you platforming across constantly moving blocks that often go right into the lava. This level works well in the game because you need to take your time with it, the exact thing the player doesn't want to do. This level is perfect at testing your patience. And on the complete opposite side of the spectrum from Morton's Castle, we have Larry's Trigger Happy Castle. And instead of testing your patience, this level tests your speed, with a Bonsai Bill chasing you as soon as you start the level, and a King Bill chasing you as you're about to end the level. Last up, we have Ludwig's Block Press Castle. This level is great because it makes use of both patience and speed. You have to be patient and wait for the blocks to move, but also fast, as if you wait too long or go too slow, you'll run out the timer or get crushed by the blocks. The only partial downside to the Koopalings in this game is that their fights are identical to Mario U. And I mean, as much as I would have loved for them to be overhauled as well, the fights were already good enough as they were in Mario U. But, after beating all the Koopalings and sinking down Bowser's ship, you make your way into the final world of the game, Peach's Castle, and see one of the biggest changes in the entirety of not only New Super Luigi U, but the New Super Mario Bros. series as a whole. Listen to this. Luigi. That's right, she said Luigi. Jokes aside though, I kinda wish they changed Peach's Castle. I mean, it feels like such a Mario thing to save Peach. Like imagine if we got Peach as a playable character and the goal was to save Daisy or Mario. It would have been a lot cooler. But it doesn't bother me too much. Onto the world itself though, I think the levels are great. Again, just like I said in my Mario U video, I would have loved to see old levels from previous 2D Mario games that took place in Peach's castle now filled with lava. But that might not really work in Luigi U anyway. I absolutely love the way they changed the elevator level though. Instead of being a vertical side scroller, now it's a horizontal one, and it feels fresh this way. Moving on to the final level, I think it's okay. The showdown with Bowser Jr. is better than Mario U, but I still think they could have expanded on it a bit more. The only interesting thing I noticed here is that Bowser Jr. tries to sabotage you at the end, which actually got me. The main reason I only call this final level okay though, is because of the Bowser fight. I completely understood the Koopalings and Boom Boom having the same fights, 
but Bowser for sure should have been different. I don't really know what new they could have done, but finishing this game exactly the same way as you do in Mario U is very disappointing and not memorable at all. Sure, the fight is still fun, but even something as small as just changing Bowser to Dry Bowser would have made a huge difference. I don't think the ending of this game is bad, it's just disappointing. New Super Luigi U is a weird game. That's the best way to describe it. I mean, it's both DLC for New Super Mario Bros. U, but also a standalone title at the same time. Despite its weirdness though, there's a lot to love about this game. It features some of the absolute best level design in the 2D Mario series, it has one of the best gimmicks in the series, and most importantly, it's easily the most unique in the series. Every single level in this game is memorable, every single one. They each have so much character, they feel so different from what we're used to. I mean, I didn't know I wanted a level about Ice Bros freezing fuzzies to create a path ahead, until I got a level about Ice Bros freezing fuzzies to create a path ahead. This game not only revisits and perfects old concepts, but also introduces entirely new ones. The movement is a perfect double-edged sword, allowing you to reach new heights, but also new lows if you slip off into the bottomless abyss. The only real complaint I have about this game is the final Bowser fight. But really, boss fights weren't what this game was about. New Super Luigi U is about level design, and just how creative and unique Nintendo can get when they really put their all into it. It's really ironic that this game is leagues better than the game it's DLC for. I rarely hear people talking about this game, and that's a real shame. It deserves so much more credit than what it gets. Playing this game gave me genuine hope for the future of 2D Mario. So to answer the question I posed at the beginning of this video, is New Super Luigi U actually good? No. It's better than good. This game is amazing! <laughs>